G'day and welcome to the Complete Survivor Guide for Seeker and Risk of Rain 2. So before I get into this guide, there's two things I want to mention real quick. One, the current state of the game with the original launch of Seekers of the Storm is awful. And honestly, I wouldn't really recommend that people update or purchase the DLC as of current patch today, 30th of August 2024. But I did a poll on YouTube and an overwhelming amount of people said that they still wanted guides for it. And two, unfortunately in Gearbox's wisdom, they haven't released any of the proc coefficients for the new survivors yet, so I don't really know what those are yet, unfortunately, and no one does. But I have been playing these survivors a lot in the past few days, so I have a pretty good feel for how they work. So before I get into the items and play styles that best work with Seeker, let's start with Seeker's abilities, and more importantly, her passive, which is called Inner Strength. Inner Strength ties in a Seeker's special ability called Meditate, and every time you meditate, you gain one stack of tranquility, which grants you plus 1% to all your stats and will continue to grant you an extra 1% until you cap it out at 6%. Now, <laughs> that is a lot to take in. Probably rewind that bit and listen to it a couple of times. It is incredibly unintuitive, but it makes sense. Just, just listen to it a couple more times. Now, honestly, I don't really find it that important. I barely even notice that it's there, but it's worth keeping an eye on your cooldowns just so you can meditate to get it to your cap tranquility as quickly as possible just to get that small boost. She only has one primary ability. Get used to me saying that, by the way, as every new survivor only has one alternate ability, but I don't want to get into that right now. Her primary is called Spirit Punch, and it shoots a fist that travels a short range, pierces enemies, and deals 200% damage, with the third fist not piercing, but being much bigger, dealing 300% damage and having a bit of AoE. Now, this is a decently strong attack that will pair very, very well with attack speed, as it is a bit slow, but where it lacks the most is in its range. So you're going to want to try and find some shuriken or an equipment to try and close that gap, as Z constructs, for example, are not going to be your friend. Moving on to Seeker's secondary abilities. This is the only ability that has an alternate for Seeker, and they both have their pros and cons, and I'll explain what I prefer and why after I explain what they do real quick. So her default secondary is called Unseen Hand and shoots a large hand from the ground with seemingly infinite range that stuns, slows, deals 600% damage and heals for every target hit. If this sounds too good on paper, then you would kind of be right given that its biggest fault is that it's got a semi-long cooldown at 7 seconds and there does seem to be like an enemy cap to how many can hit at a time, I don't know why. It seems to be around 9, just weird gearbox bugs, I'm, I'm assuming, since like, it highlights all of them, but only hits like 9 of them. I, I don't know, you'll see in the clip that's playing right now. <laughs> now, the 7 second cooldown doesn't seem that long, but when that's your biggest source of damage, that 7 seconds can really drag on, so backup mags will be your best friend here. Her alternate ability is called Soul Spiral, and summons rotating orbs dealing 100% damage per second. Do not ask me why it's described as per second and not on hit, that's it. Again, Gearbox just doing Gearbox things. You can have six out at a time and you can gain barrier every time they hit an enemy. Now, this is honestly a bit of a hard choice since the proc items seem to go crazy on the orbs and they hit so often. If you run counterclockwise, it'll also make the orbs hit more often since the, the orbs go clockwise and you run counterclockwise and the basic physics, you'll figure it out. <laughs> but you need to stay incredibly close to the enemies, which is obviously harder and harder as the stages go on. So as fun as they are, I can't say that I prefer them over the Unseen Hand ability, which just consistently holds up as a great source of burst damage and AoE. Okay, now this is where Seeker gets really good. Her utility is called Sojourn and transforms you into a ball similar to Volcanic Egg. You can stay in this mode for as long as you want, but after a couple of seconds, you will start to take damage at a very fast pace. The longer you stay in ball mode, the more damage you do when you explode out of it, with a minimum being 550% damage. But Raymond Daniels, if you take damage while in ball, surely you can't stay in it forever, right? <laughs> well, the damage is 20% of your maximum HP every second, but it's dealt over several ticks, and it's affected by repulsion armor plates and rose bucklers. What I'm saying is if you find a repulsion armor plate printer on Seeker, you best be printing at least 10 of those, because if you do, then every tick is now reduced to one and is counted as printing, whipping fungus will also work whilst in ball mode, and Plenia will be activated by the one damage taken, which heals you as well. And, did I mention you are literally invincible the entire time you're in ball mode? So that means blood trines and void cradles can still be used while you're taking zero damage. So just to recap, you are literally invincible in ball mode, the longer you stay in ball mode, the stronger the explosion, you see where I'm going here? Congratulations, you are now an unkillable nuke. Okay, coming down from the excitement of Sojourn, I would like to touch on the special of Seeker, which is called Meditate. Meditate requires you to input five directional buttons, like you're dropping an orbital strike in Helldivers 2. If done correctly, you'll deal a small AoE of 450% damage, heal yourself and nearby allies, and gain one stack of tranquility. 
tranquility being what we mentioned earlier with Seekers Passive, the thing that gives you the stat increases. Also, on the seventh Meditate, you gain what's called Saving Grace, which essentially works as an elixir that you can get for free every stage. So pretty nice to have. And you can revive a fallen ally in co-op. Well, that's what it's meant to do. In the current buggy mess of the game, it sort of does sometimes, doesn't sometimes. I was playing co-op on day one with Race and Disputed, and it did revive us once, but then not again on like another run. And it was really inconsistent, but I'm sure that'll be patched out, right? Surely. <laughs> but it's meant to revive people. So now we have an understanding of her abilities. Let's talk about playstyle. Seeker kind of feels like if Artie and Mercenary had a baby, do not Google that. It feels like a mixture of range and melee, and you can sort of swap between them both depending on your abilities and items. And similar to Artie, you really need to be cycling through all your abilities to get the highest DPS out of her. If you're playing her the way I play her, and that you cycle between getting in close with your primary and her sojourn, and then rotating out to use your unseen hand, and more of a safe distance to get a heal and re-strategize on how you want to attack the situation, then I feel like you will have the most success. But I feel there is definitely a lot of wiggle room to swap to Soul Spiral to stay as a much more consistent close quarters character. It comes down to playstyle and difficulty selection. I will say Monsoon and Under would be absolutely fine staying constantly in close and risking tanking shots, but the higher you get in the Eclipse Climb, I just don't see that being as viable, and I really encourage people to play around her unseen hand for range. Regardless, I'll say it again, the best thing you ever need to look for is Repulsion Armor Plates, Whipping Fungus, and Plenulids for your Sojourn. I cannot stress how powerful that combination is. You should be looking for it every single run. You turn into an invincible nuke. <laughs> that is the build. All right, let's kick into the tier list. I will be doing two separate tier lists, one for the non-DLC items, one for the new DLC item. Partly because I think it's interesting to keep them separate, but mainly because the new tier list template hasn't been made yet. <laughs> and I don't want to make one myself. I won't be touching on every single item, but I will make notes on the ones that I think are the most important. So, F tier. Literally nothing to touch on here. <laughs> These are just bad. Don't get them, recycle them or scrap them. That's it, there's nothing more to say here. Do not pick them up. D tier, these are mainly scrap, but they have their niches. Nothing I ever want to plan around though, just sort of there if you happen to fall into that specific build. Special note to Transcendence, which for every single other survivor is absolutely S tier, but Seeker is the exception here being that you want to be able to heal constantly while in Sojourn. That and most of her abilities are based around healing. The same thing goes for Lightning and Perfected Aspects here, normally way, way, way higher in the list, but for the same reason as above, Seeker is a special case. C tier, there's nothing exciting to touch on here either really. These items all have pretty consistent uses, Nothing that's crazy exciting to prioritize in a Seeker run. But in saying that, there is always outlying cases for these items. For example, Fireworks can be a super nice bit of damage and semi AOE through a run. Red Whips, for example, can be great speed if you work around them. And Pennies can speed up a run a ton if you can tank the hits. Just not the best items, but they have their uses. I would definitely mention though that you will never ever see Aegis this high again. The only reason it is this high at all is because of the Sojourn synergy with the Giga healing build. And even then, I'm most likely just going to scrap it. B tier. Now we're moving up in the ranks and looking at some of the more consistent items you want to look for in a Seeker run. But still, honestly, not that much to touch on here though. Just really good consistency in damage and survivability. I will say that as of current patch, the DLC has elite spawning like absolute crazy. So the guillotine is way higher than I've ever had it before in any list. I usually despise this, but right now it's pretty good. Rejuvenation Rack as well holds a special place in this list as Seeker is so healing dependent for her Sojourn build, but not quite an A tier since the amount of healing needed isn't actually that high, but definitely nice to have the Rejuvenation Rack still. And Shattering Justice didn't quite break the A tier ranks here just because you generally shoot pretty slow as Seeker, but you know, in normal people, I'd have it higher. Okay, A tier. These items are an instant pickup. They are the bread and butter of your build and you should always, always be looking for them and prioritizing them in your Seeker run. With Seeker being so close up, so so often, Focus Crystal is a must. The radius is bigger than you expect and it's a beautiful source of consistent damage. Repulsion Armor Plate, Rose Bucker, Penula, and Tough of Times are your secret source to stay in Sojourn and really tap in the ultimate build for Seeker. Highly recommend picking up as many as these as you can find. And yes, I know it's weird to have safer spaces here too, the safer spaces is always going to be incredibly good, even in this very niche build. And of course, finally, S tier. This is the pinnacle of items to be searching for in your Seeker run. Cannot recommend these any higher. A lot of these will be the same over all my guys, but a special one to mention is the Little Disciple. As Seeker is technically sprinting in Sojourn, you can be invincible, a nuke, and fire constant wisp out doing 300% damage per stack. Like that's literally the dream build right there. That is what you're looking for. That is the, the juice. And even if you don't have that build, the little disciple is just amazing consistent damage at the worst of times. So, you, you know, it's 
fantastic. Okay, leaning into the DLC items now. Unstable transmitter is straight up F. Anything that TPs you to a random position where you have no concept of what's around you or what attack needs dodging is awful. But on energy turrets, sure. On Seeker, no. Unstable transmitter is dookie. Knockback fin just seems useless to me. Why do I want an enemy to be knocked into the air? Like what purpose does that serve me? Anything that requires me taking damage to do damage is bad, so antler shield is straight up trash. And they aren't blacklisted on Mythic, so have fun with that. Noxious Thorn, again, I do not want to take damage to deal damage. And Wall Bonds is essentially three Gorse Tones drops. That also doesn't work sometimes. How is that a red item? How, how is that a red item? Or trash. Recycle them or scrap them. Straight D tier items. All right, moving on to C tier now. Looking past the fact that Warped Echo can literally make Mythics unkillable, it can be pretty useful. It splits damage so wraps are twice as good, but your safer spaces are now essentially useless. Bolstering Lancet is only this high because if you do start to lose health in Sojourn, it can synergize well with the explosion since to be below half health. Luminous Shot can be useful at times with Seeker, especially if you use Soul Spiral since you spam your secondary a lot, but it's still not that great. Prayer Beads, again, can be useful for a little boost, but nothing too exciting. And Growth Nectar is near impossible to get off the ground, but if you do, it's great. Oh yeah, and Runic Lens just feels like it never hits. And when it does, the enemy is dead already. I, I don't know, it hits sometimes. And can we talk about how long the description for <laughs> Runic Lens is? That is, anyway, I don't, I, don't, I don't have time to get into it. <laughs> They're all C tier. They're okay. They have the uses. I don't really care about them though. Okay, B tier. Chance Dolt is the first item I saw in this DLC that I actually liked. It's not amazing, but I have been told it can turn reds in Chance Trunks into yellows, which is actually wild. Chronic Expansion is only here because if you get an FMP build, it can be amazing, and by amazing I mean infinite damage, but getting that build is near impossible to do. Electric Boomerang only does 30% damage, but does fire off a lot. It's honestly just here because it physically does damage, which is just hard to come by in the DLC. And I'm not going to lie, I haven't touched long standing shot with a 10 foot pole, but I've been told it's good early and terrible late. I, don't, I honestly, tell me if I'm wrong. I don't know. I honestly don't know where to put it. it I feel like it should be in B tier. <laughs> this one, I'm happy to admit I'm wrong about long standing shot. It's a Luna, I don't touch Lunas. Anyway. B tier, all day, easy. Okay, A tier. The Sail Star, the Beast, the Item Macro Legend. This gives you double items at the first chest that you open. And yes, that includes the Legendary Chest. Very good item. I don't think that needs to be delved into why it's so good. And the Seed of Life is the Dio's as an equipment. Enough said, that's A tier. Easy, every day of the week. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> and the king at the top of it all, the red with the highest potential in the game to break your game, the Sonorous Whispers. This guarantees an extra drop from the boss enemies in the game. Not just TP enemies, the boss enemies. So just like a regular Beetle Queen spawning late in a run, will drop an extra item and a 15% chance for an elite to drop an item every time you kill one. And given the fact that elites are everywhere right now, that's pretty damn strong. Like that is dumb. It is so dumb. And I love it so much. S tier item. I Nothing deserves to be here more than the sonorous whispers. But that's it. That's the Raymond Daniels complete guide to Seeker in Risk of Rain 2. Of course, let me know what you think, how you feel. Was I right? Was I wrong? What would you change? Am I a stupid idiot moron? That's what my mum calls me, but <laughs> let me know in the comments. And of course, if you like the guide, then make sure to subscribe because I plan to do one for every new survivor and all the survivors from the past. All right, thanks for watching everybody. Love you lots, love you lots, love you lots, love you bye. Mwah.